In this lesson, we're going to take a look at polynomial functions, and we're really just going to do an introduction here, talk about what polynomial functions are, starting with the definition of a polynomial in one variable. So a polynomial is an expression of this form. Now that might look a little bit intimidating right now, but fear not, once we start replacing some of these letters with numbers, you'll see that it's not that bad. But let's take a look at what we have here. We're adding a bunch of terms. And notice that these terms have powers of x. We have x to the n, x to the n minus 1, all the way down to x squared, x to the 1, and our constant term here, which we can think of as being the x to the 0 term. And with those powers of x, we have some other numbers, the numbers out in front, which we call the coefficients. So a1 is the coefficient for our x term, a2 is the coefficient of x squared, all the way up to a n, which is the coefficient for our x to the n term. A0 over here is our constant term. Now it's important to note that when we're talking about polynomials here, n is a whole number. And right away that tells us that all of the exponents here are whole numbers. All right, so n is a whole number, so this exponent is a whole number, but also n minus one is going to be a whole number then. Same with n minus two and so on. We know that two is a whole number, we know that one is a whole number, and we know that zero is a whole number. We don't usually write x to the zero here. We just have our constant term there. It's also important to notice uh, that when we're talking about polynomials, the coefficients, the a0, a1, a2, and so on values are real numbers. Now, what's a real number? Well, it's pretty much all of the numbers you've dealt with up to this point. There are numbers out there that aren't real numbers. They're called imaginary numbers. For example, the square root of negative one is an imaginary number, uh, but we won't be using those here, not with polynomials. With polynomials, the uh, coefficients are always real numbers. So you'll see whole numbers, integers, perhaps fractions or decimals, even square roots of, of numbers, uh, but all real numbers are used for coefficients with polynomial expressions. Okay, let's move on and take a look at some examples. So what we have here are a bunch of examples of expressions that are polynomials, and a bunch of examples of expressions that are not polynomials. And if we take a look at the left-hand column, we see that all of these expressions meet those requirements for being a polynomial expression. That is, the exponents are whole numbers. Okay, two is a whole number, one is a whole number, two, three, and so on. And furthermore, the coefficients, uh, the numbers in front of our x terms, they are real numbers. So we have, for example, five, uh, negative seven here, negative two thirds, these are all real numbers. The last one here might throw you off, but just remember if we were to expand this factored expression, we'd have a bunch of powers of x that have whole number exponents and real number coefficients. Now let's take a look at the right-hand column. All of these are examples of expressions that are not polynomial expressions. Why not? Well, first of all, Polynomial expressions do not have exponents that are variables. Polynomial expressions do not have the variable in a denominator like this. We know that polynomials have to have whole number exponents, and this one here has an integer exponent of negative one that's not a whole number. Polynomial expressions do not have trigonometric expressions in them like this sine x term here. We know that polynomials have to have whole number exponents once again, so these are not whole numbers, so this is not a polynomial expression. And once again, down here we have an expression that has the variable x in the denominator, so that is not a polynomial expression. Now, a couple of notes. Uh, it is possible to have polynomials that use variables other than x. For example, here is a polynomial expression that uses t instead of x. And furthermore, a polynomial can actually contain more than one variable. Here's an example of one of those. We have a polynomial expression that has uh, both x and t in it. Okay, and we'll finish with just a little bit more uh, terminology, starting with the degree of a polynomial. What is the degree of a polynomial? Well, it's just the value of the highest exponent on the variable. So here's an example. We have a polynomial expression here, 7x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5x minus 8. And to find the degree for this polynomial, we are looking for the highest exponent on x. And notice it is 3 right here. So the degree of this polynomial is 3. What is the leading coefficient for a polynomial? It is the coefficient of the highest power of the variable. So let's see an example 
to make sure we understand what that's talking about. The leading coefficient for this polynomial will be the coefficient that goes with the highest power of x. And we just saw this polynomial expression in the previous example up here, and we noted that it is a degree 3 polynomial. That is the highest exponent on x. So the coefficient for that term is 7, which means that the leading coefficient for this polynomial is 7. And one more piece of terminology here, a polynomial function. So finally, we get the definition of a polynomial function. Now, what is it? It's a pretty straightforward idea if you understand what a polynomial expression is. A polynomial function is a function for which the rule is a polynomial. That is, if we have, uh, for example, here a polynomial expression, 7x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5x minus 8, if that is the rule for our function, then that function is called a polynomial function. So, for example, if we had f at x equals 7x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5x minus 8, that is a polynomial function, okay? The rule here, this uh, polynomial expression, is the rule for our function, which makes this function a polynomial function. It looks like I just put an f at x equals in front of this polynomial expression and called it a polynomial function, and that is actually exactly what I did. All right, we'll finish with uh, some examples here, a little game, if you will. Uh, name that degree and leading coefficient, starting with this polynomial expression. What is the degree for this polynomial expression? Well, the degree is the highest exponent on x, which as we can see is 4. So this is a degree 4 polynomial. And the coefficient for that x to the 4 term is negative 8, which means that our leading coefficient is negative 8. Let's do another one. Now we have a polynomial function. Notice we have y equals a polynomial expression. What is the degree for this one? Well, be careful. You know, we're getting used to looking at the beginning term, the, the first term, and, and saying that that one is the, uh, the, the one that has the highest power of x in it, and it usually is when written out on paper or, or whatever, but notice that if we scan through here, we have another term that actually has a higher exponent on x. That is the highest exponent on x, this 4 here. So our degree is actually 4. And for that x to the 4 term, our coefficient is 1. We didn't write it, but we have a 1 here. So that is our leading coefficient, just 1. And last but not least, we have another polynomial function here. 1.5x cubed plus 0.8x to the 5 minus 4.1x to the 7. What is the degree? Well, that's the highest exponent on x, and we see right here that that is 7. And the leading coefficient is going to be the coefficient of that x to the 7 term, which is negative 4.1. Remember, subtracting 4.1x to the 7 is the same as adding negative 4.1x to the 7. So our leading coefficient is negative 4.1. And that's it, a little bit of an introduction to what polynomial functions are.